Today, I'm going to show all four techniques that the pros use to simulate the most realistic ink bleed, printed, and grunge effects on your designs. What's going on everyone, my name is Tom from Dread Labs and I'm a graphic designer and visual artist. In today's video I'm going to showcase a couple of techniques that I use and a lot of other pro designers use in order to achieve the most realistic ink bleed effects. The cool thing is that most of these effects can actually be used separately as well. So if you like a certain technique you can combine it with the others or you can just leave it alone and you can only just use that effect if you want to. Without any further ado, let's dive straight into the video. Alright, so what we have here is a quick design that I did in Illustrator and I pasted this into Photoshop. Shop. And the important thing here is that this design is a smart object. So it's all one layer and because it's a smart object we can actually stack multiple filters and effects on top of this and change them later if we want to. By the way, if you want to get the vector shapes that are used in this artwork, they are part of the Rave Essentials pack that I've made a couple of months ago. Uh, you can check it out through the link in the description down below. So the first thing that we want to do is achieve a bleed. If we zoom in, you can see that the lines are really, really harsh. You can always see that these edges aren't as hard in real life. So the first thing we want to do is create a little bit of a fade between the black and the white here. I have two different filters that we can use for this. The first one is the box blur. So we'll go to filter, blur, box blur. And immediately you can see that with a radius of three pixels, we have a fade already. If we click OK and we'll zoom out, you can see that this makes the design a little bit too blurry perhaps. So the nice thing about a smart object is if we go to our layer menu here and we double click on the box blur, we can just change this back to maybe one pixel. And even one pixel already does a lot, as you can see right here. So this is without and this is with. What I like to do is sometimes your design needs even a more subtle box blur. And the way I go about countering this is if you go to this little slider button at the right and you double click. This will bring up the blending options for that specific box blur. That means that we can now toggle the opacity from 100% to maybe 50%. And as you can see, if we toggle it off, you can still see a slight bleed in there, even with the box blur put at one pixel. And if we make this higher again, you can see that some sort of shadow starts appearing. And this can also be really interesting in some design forms. Uh, for now, let's keep it and push it back to one. And another technique that I use in order to create a nice subtle uh, bleed with the box blur is duplicating this design. We'll, from that one, we'll just put the opacity back to 100% and we'll up the box blur to maybe three pixels. Uh, and if we want to, we can just lower the opacity of the whole design altogether, maybe to 50%. And if we want to have an even stronger bleed, we can also duplicate this one once again and up the radius to maybe five pixels and change the opacity to 25%. And as you can see, we now have a really strong bleed. This can also be used as a glow, of course. Uh, and now it kind of looks like a shadow. But to, just to give you an idea, this is how I achieve the most detailed bleeds because this gives me a lot of control over the different layers that I've duplicated so far. So that's the method with the box blur. I'm also gonna show you another method and this one creates more ink bleeds, I guess in the sense of where the ink is kind of leaking and it looks like it's printed a little bit too thick so that there's a little bit too much ink used in printing. Let's grab both of the layers that we've used in this design and we'll press Ctrl or Command J on our keyboard to duplicate them. And we're just gonna remove the box blur here. We don't really need it. So now we basically have a duplication of uh, our first two layers. We'll group them together and we'll call this Gaussian blur. Now we'll right click, convert to smart object. And we now have the same smart object that we had before but now we have one with a white background. And that's actually what we're looking for. And I'm gonna show you why. We'll go to Filter, Blur, Gaussian Blur, and we'll change the Gaussian Blur to maybe three pixels. Might be a little bit high, so let's do two and a half. And as you can see, this kind of blurs our image a little bit, and this doesn't really look like an ink bleed, but the cool part is, because we have a black and a white value in our layer, we can add a levels adjustment or a curves adjustment, but this is mainly to increase the contrast of our image. So let's go to image, adjustments, levels. You can also press Ctrl or Command L on your keyboard. And once we start crunching these together, what you'll see is that we can actually start seeing a bleed effect happening. I'm also gonna remove the box blur of our bottom layer just so we can see the difference between the first one and the one that we made now. So this is the one that we made now. I'll zoom in a little bit. And you can see that the design is even more thick. And you can also check, so let's zoom in more, one more time. You can really see that difference. And with the levels adjustment, you really have that control over how large you want that fade to be. So if we just lower the con contrast here, you'll see that there's more fade going on. So if we've reset the levels here, you can see that there's a lot of gray values between the pure black and the pure white here. 
And once we start sliding this in, it will simply convert all those gray values to blacks. We can also do the same thing with white though. So once we start sliding this in, our design will look a lot thinner. If we zoom out, we have a lot more like a thin ink bleed. And if you want the bleed to be larger, you can of course change the size of the Gaussian blur as well. If we just press 5 to do a little bit more drastically, as you can see, we also get a really nice uh, glowy look, I guess. Really. The reason we use a black background in this smart object is because if we wouldn't do that, the levels wouldn't really working because the background will be transparent. So if we double click on our Gaussian blur here and we'll make the background layer invisible. So now it's a transparent smart object. You can see that it's not really working out. It does blur, but it doesn't really use the levels properly. So let's change this to something right here. The thing with this, however, you can already kind of see it in the bottom corner. It will mean that your smaller, more highly detailed designs will be bled and unreadable because there was text here. But I prefer to have it a little bit more subtle. So what I did now is I basically put the same box blur uh, on the same design. Uh, the first one has a radius of 1 and an opacity of 75%. And the second one has a radius of 2 pixels and an opacity of 50%. Right, so now that we've talked about fades and bleeds, let's talk about distortion a little bit. So if we zoom in here, you can see that we have a really nice straight edge, especially along these horizontal lines. And that doesn't really look like that in real life, of course. Uh, and that's why we want to distort our design as well. There's a couple of methods that you can use in order to distort your design slightly. Uh, of course, we don't really want this to look crazily like distorted and unreadable. We just want to move around these edges in a subtle manner. The easiest way to do that is with displacement maps. So I have a whole video on displacement maps uh, if you want to know what they are and how they work. Uh, for now, I'm just going to go to filter, distort, displace. And you can create your own displacement maps from textures. I have a full set of displacement maps from the Dreadlabs Ray Flyer Essentials pack. Uh, which I'm going to use. I'm going to change the horizontal and the vertical scale to 5. And I'm going to pick one of these 10 displacement maps. Let's try number 3. And as you can see, we now have a slightly changed like pixels. You can see that they kind of moved around. And this is based on the light and dark values of the PSD file that you load in when using the displacement map filter. So the displacement maps that I just used are from paper textures. Uh, so basically the light and dark values of paper textures will change these edges around a little bit. Uh, let's zoom out to see what that looks like. And as you can see, there are some slight changes within the uh, lines here, especially around here. Uh, if you want to, you can also change the order of these filters here. So if we drag down the displacement map, the box blur will affect the displacement map as well. So that your bleed is equally in the same parts everywhere. Let's turn off this place for now. And let's see what other options there are out there in case you don't have any displacement maps or you find it a little bit too difficult. So under filter, Blur, Distort, Ripple. You can change the size of the ripple to small. And we'll make a really subtle, maybe 12%. As you can see, maybe 12% is a little bit too small. Now let's change this to maybe 50%. And you can see now we have this like slight movement around in the edges. Uh, looking at it now, I think 25% is maybe a little bit better. As you can see, the edges are now not even. They're a little bit moved around, which is also pretty nice. Uh, you can actually use the ripple together with the displacement if you want to for even more realistic displacement. So looking at this, we now have a pretty nice uh, ink bleed so far. It looks pretty realistic already, uh, given that we've put textures on it and stuff like that. But I still have two more techniques in order to create a more realistic grunge effect on this as well. Before you continue, I want to ask you something. Would you like to get access to over 100 Photoshop, Illustrator and After Effects files? Well, you can. On my Patreon channel, you'll find all the project files from all of my tutorials, exclusive videos, a discount code for my asset web store, and many more perks. I've been making YouTube videos for almost four years now, and I'm nearing 500 videos on my channel. And all of those videos are almost all related to graphic design. In order to keep creating those videos for you guys for free, I need to maintain some sort of income out of Dreadlabs. Otherwise, I'm forced to get another job. When I'm forced to get another job, I won't have the time to write, record, and edit these videos for you guys anymore. So so that's where my Patreon channel comes in. My Patreon channel provides me with a source of income that I can use in order to keep creating these videos for you guys. If it was up to me, I would always keep creating these videos and keep giving you free tutorials for the rest of my life. Of course, it's kind of hard to do that and that's why my Patreon channel is actually really essential to me and my channel. So besides supporting me, my Patreon channel comes with a lot of perks. Like I said, 
you'll get access to all of the project files from all of my tutorials, which is over 100 Photoshop, Illustrator, Cinema 4D and After Effects files. You'll get a permanent 15% discount in my asset web store where I sell textures, vector packs, mockups and more. And the Dreadlabs Rayflyer Essentials Pack that I've used in this video is also available on my website. So you'll get that for a 15% discount if you're a Patreon member. And you'll also get an exclusive role in the Dreadlabs Discord community server, which is a server with over 3000 designers where we ask questions, give feedback and talk about life as a creative in general. You'll also get access to all of the live streams that I've done in the past, where you can see my full design process. There's also a slightly higher tier that gives you access to exclusive tutorial videos, such as how to start your own clothing brand, how to make death metal logos from scratch, and much more. You'll also get access to all of the project files from my Creatober series, which is about an additional 100 project files, ranging from 3D works to poster designs and much more. So if this is something you're interested in, there's a link down in the description that gives you access to all of my Patreon channels. If you do not have the budget to support Dreadlabs in that way, I completely understand. And just know that you can also subscribe for one month and that will give you access to all the perks that I just mentioned. And you can just immediately unsubscribe. Doing this, however, will restrict you from getting access to any future project files and there are new ones coming every single month. If you do not have any budget at all to support Dreadlabs, of course that's completely fine as well. You can also support me for free by leaving a like and a comment on this video and subscribe to the channel while you're at it and ringing that bell button. Ever since you guys started engaging more with my videos by liking and commenting, my videos are doing better and better in the algorithm. I heard from a lot of subscribers of mine that they don't really see when I upload a new video, so ringing that bell button might help you out with that so you'll never miss a new tutorial. So thank you for hearing me rant about supporting my channel. I hope you consider supporting me in some way, shape or form. But for now, let's continue back into the video. So we now have a slight distortion and a nice bleed on our design. So the next thing we're gonna do is sometimes these printers, they skip a couple of parts in your design and we're gonna simulate that with a mask. So if we click on the mask here, uh, if you do not know how masks work, I now have a black brush. If I now paint with a black brush inside the mask, you can see that it becomes invisible wherever I paint black. And when I paint with white, it will become visible again. So we can actually use this to our advantage. The first thing I'm gonna do is make a new layer. I'm gonna drop in this paper texture. I'm gonna rasterize it and, and we're gonna go to adjustments levels and add a lot of contrast in here so something like this is what you want to look for so that there's there are some darker spots but it's mostly white okay now we're going to press ctrl or command a to select everything in our canvas now we'll press ctrl c and we'll make this layer invisible now we'll go to the layer mask of the design and we'll alt click and now we're basically in the mask view and now we're just press paste and what's happening now is we use the texture as a mask on our design so if we alt click outside of our design, you can see that there's now a texture on our design here. So that's really nice. Of course, if you think this is too much, what you can do is with the layer mask selected, we'll press Control L again, and this will give us access to the levels options again. And we can also just simply change this back. So if we make this lighter, as you can see, less and less dust or scratches are appearing, right? Looking good so far. And of course, what we can also do is if we zoom in here, they are kind of harsh, so we can also just go to filter, blur, box blur, and this will blur out these scratches a little bit as you can see. I'm just gonna leave the texture layer in here for the people on Patreon. So what you can do if you don't want these uh, mask things to occur at the edge is duplicate your layer and we'll remove the mask on this one. And we'll also change the fill to 0% and we'll go to inner shadow and let's change the blend mode to normal the opacity to 100 percent we'll change the size to maybe five pixels and once we up the choke as you can see we'll just uh, make our bottom design invisible and this basically creates an outline around our design so once we turn this off you can actually see basically this helps with the edges around there I'm not really bothered by them, so I'll delete this layer. And I'm also going to show you an alternative uh, to creating this with a texture. So I'm going to go into my layer mask by alt clicking on our layer mask. I'm going to press Ctrl or Command A on my keyboard and I'm going to delete everything. And we're just going to fill this with our foreground color. Next, I'm going to go to filter, noise, add noise. And we'll do maybe 10%. Next, I'm going to go to filter, filter gallery and we're going to click on torn edges and i'm having my image balance at 21 the smoothness at 7 and the contrast at 5 but you can play around with these if you like of course the goal is to create some of these darker spots in here but keep the main thing a little bit light so if we go back into our design now you can see that probably a lot of it is lost because the uh, edges are like kind of thick so let's go back in here and what i'm going to do is go to image adjustments curves and i'm going to drag this one all the way up and 
create a smaller like dip in the middle here you'll have some darker spots as you can see as you can see this will also give you access to some of these like harder edges uh, you can also of course go to filter again noise add noise i will do maybe 25 percent and as you can see this will also add some grain into the mask you can also play around and experiment with this if you want to learn more on how to control the clouds filter i have a full video on it where i experiment out with it a lot show you a lot of things you can use in order to create some textures similar to this maybe even more similar towards the paper texture that we use in the beginning but for now i want to go back into the paper texture that we used so copy this alt click and paste so now we're at the final step and what i'm going to do is right click on my layer convert it into a smart object again so if you want to change one of the filters that we used earlier in the video you can now just simply double click on the thumbnail here and we have the file right here but what i'm going to do is i'm going to add another displacement map to this i'm going to go to filter distort displace and we're going to make this quite large let's start out with 25 pixels and see if that's enough and we'll just grab one of the displacement maps and as you can see this really distorts our layer but uh, what i'm going to do is i'm just going to place this effect in certain parts of our design and the way i'm going to do that is you might have noticed that there's also a layer mask on our smart filters right here in the layer menu we can use this and basically pick and place where we want this effect to occur and that's why we turn this into a smart object because otherwise this would happen with all of the filter effects and we just want it to happen with this particular filter effect so the first thing we want to do is click on this layer mask we'll fill this with black now if we go out of the view you'll see that the effect is nowhere to be seen and that's because our entire filter mask is black next we're going to grab a brush we'll change the hardness to zero percent the size to 125 pixels we'll change the mode to dissolve now we'll make sure that our foreground color is white and now wherever we're going to paint is where this distortion will happen as you can see right here now finally, I only think that this will need a texture. So we'll drop in a light and a dark texture from the Dreadlabs Rayflyer Essentials. Change the darker texture to screen and the lighter texture to multiply. And we'll scale both of these to cover an entire canvas. And perhaps we need a nice little gradient map in order to add some color to our design. So this is a gradient from my Metal Heart Essentials pack. I'm actually quite happy with the result right here. So there you have it guys, four methods that the pros use in order to achieve the perfect ink bleed, grunge and other printed text effects. If this video was useful to you, please let me know down in the comments because helping me out with the algorithm is highly appreciated. If you're not subscribed to my channel already, I have over 400 videos, almost 500 videos on graphic design. So if you want to up your graphic design game, I would highly consider subscribing to my channel and ringing that notification button in order to never miss a future video. Like I said halfway through, if you want to get the PSD file for this video, together with a lot of other perks, you can become a patron member of mine and the link to that is in the description down below. With all of that being said, this is Tom from Dreadlabs tuning out. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video.